All right guys, today we're gonna to be fixing the trim issues that I've had since I bought the boat. When I bought the boat, almost all the gauges on the dash worked except for the trim gauge, which tells you where your trim is at. And um, another issue is when I raise the motor, I'm unable to use this up button. I actually have to use the trailer button, which is still on the throttle, but it's a little bit further down. And so to raise, I use that button. To lower, I use the down button but I can't raise it using this up button. And I'll show you guys why that is. And I'll just show you guys real quick when I raise. You can see the gauge doesn't move at all. And I'll lower it again. All right, so as you can see right here, there is supposed to be a trim limit switch here that um, when you raise the motor to a certain height, it will trigger the switch and disallow you from using that up button on the throttle. And since the previous owner actually removed this one here, there's most likely something wrong with it. So he just took it off. And so that's the reason why I'm unable to use the up button and instead have to use the trailering button on the throttle. And if you look over on this side, you can see this one, this is the trim sending unit and you can see it's still there, but um, the wires behind it are in really bad shape. They're exposed and so that, that's not working at all there either. And so what I've done is I've bought this trim sender and trim limit switch kit on Amazon and I'll link the link it below, but uh, it comes with both the trim sender and the trim limit switch and the wiring for that. And so I believe it was around $120 for the kit. What I'll be doing is installing those down here, but the way these connect inside the boat, they go through a hole directly behind this gimbal here. And so when you get it done professionally, they'll actually remove the whole out drive here. And so they can get to that a little easier, but I've done a little bit of reading and uh, I should be able to get this done without removing this. And so I'll show you guys how I plan on getting that done. All right, so I've got the lower unit turned all the way to the right. And when you do this, you can actually see where the bolt is that you need to get to, to run the wires through the transom. And I have a correction. It's actually the trim limit switch that goes here on the port side. And on the other side is the trim sending switch. So I'm completely missing the trim sending switch. And on this side, the trim limit switch is here, but the wires are in really bad shape and the switch itself doesn't look to be in the best shape either. So I'm gonna be swapping them both out. And to do that, I need to be able to run the wires coming out of both of them back to the engine bay inside the boat. And there's a bolt in here that I need to get to to do that. So I'll see if I can show you guys. All right, so on the center of the screen there, you can see where the bolt is that I need to get to. Since this is a Gen 2 Alpha 1, I only have one bolt that I need to get to. Uh, after doing some reading and some other videos, the older generation, I believe it's 91 and older, the Alpha 1 Gen 1s have two bolts that you need to get to. And so that makes it quite a bit harder just because the upper bolt is nearly impossible to get to without removing the whole lower unit. So I'm thankful that I have the Gen 2. And so I'll show you guys the tools that I'm planning on using to get this removed. All right guys, here are the tools that I'm planning on using for now. Uh, I went out yesterday and bought this eight inch extension. Ideally, I would have just bought a wobble extension, but they didn't have it where I was. But I do have this U-joint socket adapter that I can attach to the end of there. Um, and then on the end of that, I have a 716 socket here. I did also pick up a set of these wrenches, and if it comes to it, I may need to fabricate something with this on the end of it uh, to see if I can reach up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on removing that bolt now. All right, so to get to this bolt, you have to go straight up through here, which is the reason why you have to turn the lower unit all the way to the right. Uh, you can't access it through any other space just because the extension is too big and so you have to go through this gap here which is what makes it so difficult and so I'm gonna see if I can get to this bolt up in here all right so I've got that bolt out 
uh, took a lot of finagling back and forth, but uh, that came out eventually. So you can see up in here where the bolt was that I removed. And so it's very hard to reach. Um, and from what I've heard, it's putting it back in that's the hardest part. So I'm sure I'll be messing with that for a while once we get to that step. So what I'm gonna do now is move to the inside of the boat and show you where these come through and how I'm gonna go about swapping them out. All right, now we're inside and I'm going to just remove the seat that I just made in the previous video, as well as the engine bay cover so that I can have full access to where the wires come through. All right, so I was able to find where the wires come through. So the trim limit switch wires, both wires come out right down here. You guys can see, it's hard to show you guys, but there are two sets of cables coming out right there. And this one that you can see is the trim limit switch wires. So those run up to here and then over here and they run to the these this purple and double blue cable. So one of the trim limit switch wires runs to the one purple and then the other one runs to the two blue. So I'll have to look and see which one goes to which, but that's for the trim limit. And those go directly to the trim pump here. And then the trim sending wires come out the same spot and then those run up here you can see that and then run right over here and then they're going directly to the engine harness here so i've attached some pull string to the end of the wires and so i'm going to go ahead and pull those through from the back side. What I'm actually using here is just some weed whacker string. Uh, SC Regal on iBoats did this and he suggested this, so thanks for that idea, SC Regal. I've actually tied both ends off up here just so I can be sure I don't pull them through. I'm gonna start by pulling the trim limit wires through. All right, so I got that plug out of there. Just pulling it. So I've actually got both wires now coming through here. Make sure not to pull too hard and potentially disconnect the string I have on the other end. All right, so that's now through. And if you look here, you can see how these cables go in and actually plug the hole that they go through. So this is the ring that had the bolt that we removed at first. And right on the other end are these rubber plugs, one on the trim sending and one on the trim limit switch wires. And when they go together, they form a plug. And so when we pull these back through, the new ones back through, the new ones have the same plug on, on here. And so we'll pull it through and I'll probably add a little bit of tape to this side to keep them together and we'll pull it through and make sure that those are nice and snug in there before we secure this cable holder back in there. All right, so I've removed the old trim limit switch and you can see it's in pretty bad shape and same with the wires here. So here is the new trim limit switch as well as the trim sender. And so I'm gonna just tape these off somewhere up here and then I will fish the new wires up through the transom. So I've got the new trim sender and trim limit switch wires attached to the pull string and I've labeled the trim limit switch wire just so once I pull it through, I don't have to uh, go back and see which one is which. And then the trim sending wire goes through on this side. And so I 
put that through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one through at a time. All right, so I was able to successfully get the trim limit switch wire through. And at first I was pulling it from the back side and um, that wasn't seeming to work. But from this side, I was able to just look up in there and get it at, a, at the right angle. And then I was actually able to just to push it through from this side. So um, as long as you get it at the right angle and you can see it, you shouldn't have too much issues getting it through. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna turn the drive to the left a little bit so that I can look up in there and push that one through. Alright, while well, trying to pull the trim sending cable through the weed whacker string came out and so what I'm doing now is I've tied the, the trim sender cables to the trim limit switch cable that I've already got through and so I've taped them together and I'm going to be pulling on the trim limit switch and hopefully be able to get the other cable through with it. So I'll help it as much as I can from this side and then I'll go on the other side and pull it through. Okay, that did work and I was able to get both cables through. This is the first one and then back here is where I tied the second one to the first one and pulled that one through as well. So now that we've got both cables through, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of each cable in there. And like the old one, each cable has this half plug and so once you actually get it up in there, you'll need to make sure they're in there like this and so I'm gonna have somebody from the other end pulling while I try to guide these into the hole and make sure that they get in there all the way. So now that we've got the cables almost all the way pulled through and we're almost to where the plugs are going to be pulled through, I have attached a little bit of electrical tape to each side to help keep the plug together when it goes into the hole and I've also put the bracket on. We've got the wires and the plug seated. So I'm gonna try to show you guys what that looks like in here. All right, you can see how the bracket holds the plug in there. And right below the plug and the wire is where we're gonna have to try to get the bolt in there. So I've got the bolt in the socket here and I've wrapped a little bit of tape around the base just to keep it snug in here so that it doesn't slip out and I'll end up losing it. All right, so I was able to get that bolt in there. It probably only took me 10 or 15 minutes. As I mentioned before, this is the Alpha 1 Gen 2. So there's only one bolt for me to get in there and I feel like that made it a lot easier for me. So you can see right there, the bolt is all the way on and I have a long drill bit that I reached in there with and just tried moving the bracket and it's definitely not going anywhere and there's no gaps or anything. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so I've cleaned up where the trim limit switch attaches and there's a little dial on the back here where the two lines match up. So I've lined those up and now I'm gonna put this on. All right, so I've got the new trim limit switch on here and with the kit came this little wire holder that it says to clamp the cable here to the water hose that's just underneath and so I'll go ahead and put that on there and show you what it looks like. Here's the switch cable and here's the clamp connected to the water hose here. I think that's to help protect it from moving around and potentially getting pinched up in here. Alright so I've cleaned up this side and there's a dial on this one as well so I'll line those up and 
go ahead and put that on there. Now this side did not come with a clip to secure this cable anywhere, um, but I do see a spot that I can secure it to that shouldn't disrupt any of the movement. So I feel like the least amount of movement in here, the better. So I'm gonna use one of these zip ties, get it in there and then clip it off. So I've got the zip tie on there. I didn't clamp it down super tight or anything. I'll do some movement testing, raising and lowering and back and forth just to make sure it's not gonna pull on anything else in here. All right, so we're back inside the boat and I'm gonna try to show you guys how I ran these. So down here is where both of them are coming out. And you wanna be careful that make sure you route them around this steering assembly here because they can easily get pinched. So I made sure to route them underneath here and then I ran them both up and zip tied them here. And I pretty much zip tied this trim limit switch all the way along here and connected it here. And after doing some reading, it doesn't seem to matter which one you connect here. So for the trim, limit switch you can just connect them in the quicksilver kit the ends just connected right into the harness for the pump here so i've got that zip tied there and then over here for the trim sender i routed the cable around here and up here and the ends here will also just plug in right here so these aren't in the best shape but i cleaned them off a little bit and i think they'll be just fine so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more zip ties and just make sure everything is secure in there. And then I'll do some testing. All right, so I've got everything connected up. And one thing I've noticed already without even turning the ignition key is the trim is showing all the way up. Whereas before I did anything, this would always just show as all the way down. The trim is all the way down. So we'll see what happens when I turn the key. Okay, when I turn the key, it's showing as right in the middle. So it looks like I'll have to do some adjusting on the trim sender. And so all I need to do for that is turn the dial a little bit. So I'll show you guys how I do that. The next thing I'm gonna test is the trim up button on the throttle. This button hasn't worked since I bought the boat. And so here's the moment of truth for that one. And it looks like that's working as well. So um, that's pretty exciting. That's the first time that's worked with this boat. So before that I was having to do this, but this trim up button is now working. So I'm sure I'll have to do some adjusting with this one as well. The instructions tell you how to set that. So I'll work on that now. So for the trim sender, you can adjust that by spinning this here. And so I can actually see when I look over the back of the boat where the trim says it's at and so I'm going to spin it one direction or the other until I see it right on that minimum trim line. Okay, so that was easy enough. I adjusted the trim sender and tightened it down and so now we'll test raising the trim and see how the gauge works. All right, well that seems to be working great. I'll go ahead and lower it back down. All right, well that's perfect. When you're looking straight on, the dial is right on the lines where they should be. So, um, I think we're good to go for that one. I'll go ahead and adjust the trim limit switch now. All right, so per our instructions here, the Alpha 1 Gen 2 models need to have 20 and 3 quarter inch max distance when the up trim cuts off. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the trim and it'll cut it off at some point and I'll go ahead and measure that distance and then make adjustments. Okay, so according to the trim gauge, it's almost three quarter way up. So I'll go ahead and measure the distance now and see where it's at. 
All right, so it's at about 21 and three quarters. So I'll go ahead and adjust the dial and then test again. Okay, so I start off with this thing about just in the middle, but you're supposed to start off with it as far clockwise as it'll go. So what I've done is spun it clockwise about halfway in between where I had it and where it would be fully clockwise. And so we'll go ahead and try that now. All right, we're now just at about 20 and a half. And so I'll adjust it just a little bit more. All right, and I'll show you here. It is at just 20 and three quarters. It's just perfect there. So I'll go ahead and tighten the screws on both ends and we should be good to go. All right guys, well I have everything dialed down and working perfect. Definitely glad I got this done. Um, you know, I did a lot of reading on this through iBoats and other forms and uh, kind of got discouraged a couple times just because people explained their frustrations, especially with getting the bolt removed and put back in behind the gimbal. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad I, I did it. With the Gen 2 models, definitely not as hard to do as the Gen 1 models with just the one bolt. I was able to get that back in there in 15, maybe 20 minutes. So if you're thinking about doing this yourself, definitely would recommend it. Um, like I said, I'll include the link for the Quicksilver kit that I bought on Amazon. Uh, everything was matched perfectly with what was already in the boat. And so it, it was pretty much just plug and play in terms of once I ran the cables through the boat, they plugged in just where the other cables were. And they do seem like maybe they're, the cables are a little bit better protected than the ones that came with the boat. Um, so hopefully they hold up a little bit better. But uh, at the end, I'll show you guys the tools I ended up using. So this, this setup worked great. Like I said, I think if you had just a standard wobble extension, it would potentially work even better. Um, and then these other tools I use basically just to kind of reach in there and help either grab a cable or move a cable around. There's a lot of fiddling around and that's probably what took the most time is just the tight space that you're reaching in trying to get the cables oriented in the right way and everything. But all in all, I would say definitely it was worth doing. Um, wasn't really that difficult. It's just time consuming. It took me the better part of the day. I would say without filming and stuff, I probably could have got this done in three, maybe four hours, but depending on your situation, your tools, you could do it even faster. So if you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys.